Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Now I'm back with another recap of Tyler Perry's Sisters Season 6, Episode 3, Fanning the Flames. Let's get into it. So far, Pam gets to Karen's shop and she's out there. She's greeted by a, a firefighter and he's basically letting her know that there's a body inside. So she starts hyperventilating and going crazy and whatnot. I think like, can she go inside to see, what, see what's happening? Then Aaron pulls up. He tries to kind of console um, Pam, but Pam says, like, going crazy. And then at the same time, another firefighter came to, like, help her up or whatever. And then after that, they went to wait for the medical examiner because he supposedly has four other, four other calls. So we they basically waited in the line. So after them, the firefighters left. It's just Pam and Aaron and Basically, Aaron went off on her like a a, a a kid in trouble. Like he scolded her like, like this is this is your fault. Like she always been telling you to like make sure stuff is turned off. And then Pam was like, you don't know what I be going through and stuff like that. It's like this is your fault. So you best believe and you better pray that Karen's body ain't inside there because yeah. So now Pam is like readily trying to call um karen's mom and aaron was like listen wait it out because you don't know if that could be somebody else i understand her car is here but you know let's just wait and see like don't put a rush on things because you might screw up and it'd be the wrong thing then it's like dang you should have just waited so that was them miss tima looking fire and her blue and yellow combo just looking like a whole snack come to find out zach shows up there he um she was like, listen, I just left from you. He was like, yeah, I know, but, you know, I just had a situation. He was talking to her about that. He kind of made sense of, like, how she, the whole sleep in the rain with the sun. And Fatima was like, yeah, that'll make sense. And Zach was like, yeah, it don't make sense, but whatever. So she said, I can't come over there to a three. And then, you know, Fatima, there ain't nothing without Fatima with her little quick thing. She was like, well, we could go on our lunch break. He was like, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Because it's like, it kind of puts him back in the mind of how his mom used to do him, leave him at home by himself, watching, basically watching himself in the TV. So, yeah, that's that. Then next, you know, they have a little moment. Andy walks in and she's like, <clears throat> and you already know when she come in, you already know he got to cut it short. Because, you know, Andy be Andy and <laughs> she be trying to like cock block on the situations. But when somebody do that to her, it's a problem. But anyways, you know, they said they goodbyes or whatnot. And Andy and Fatima got ready to do their deposition for a case they got going on. Uh, Sabrina, she's basically don't got nothing to do with, it, do with her life. She basically dusted some, some, some. So what the heck you call the wall bitches? And she get a knock on the door and walks by him. She gives him the biggest hug and she thanks him for everything. And then she talks about Maurice. At this point, I could care less about Maurice. Like he put you in this situation, but you not grasping that situation. You not grasping the whole big picture. You just think, oh, he's down on his luck. Did you think it was his reason? That's why stuff was going the way it is. But anyways. So she's talking about how she got a 401k and how she got some investments saved up and stuff like that. So she basically penny pitched and she also told him like she might be fired from her job. So he's figured out a way like I could put you on to some investments so that way you won't never have to worry about working a day in your life. She's like, no, I'm really like, yeah, uh, uh. like, girl, take this man off for it. Like, listen, if you don't want him, send him my way. Like, trust me, send him my way. Like. I want to be put on so I ain't got, never got to work again in my life. Like, come on now. <laughs> what do you do with this? You messing up. So eventually, he wanted to take off for lunch. And she's thinking like, he was like, listen, what you think about not going to make me go broke? Like, listen, it's just lunch. Okay, lunch. So he basically told her no purse, no phone, no nothing. So she was like, eventually, can I take it? So she got her keys. And then he grabbed her shoes and they walked out. He was like, she was like, can you, are you going to wipe my feet? For me, when we get in, we'll get in the car, he's like, listen, I got people for that. I'm a whole prince, right? You a whole prince out here in these streets. Like, listen, if, if it's just, we don't want him, send him my way. Send him my way, okay? Yes, send him my way, okay? So, after the deposition, Andy and Fatima are having a moment of talking, basically. 
Fatima talks to Andy about the whole Zach and baby mama situation. And Fatima made a comment like, um, I would never be never be as good as you. And she was like, why? And Fatima was like, because the way you was asking them questions and stuff like that. And Andy was like, I basically knew that the guy was going to settle the s settlement and stuff like that. So um, they was talking about it. And basically Fatima just let her know, like, listen. Um, no, Andy let her know, like, yeah, I know you would never be as good as me. And for Tina made this face like if looks could kill, Andy would be dead right for that. And then she was just like, she's like, yeah, I know, because you would be better. And then for Tina was trying to laugh because Andy, we was all about to come for your head. Like you were coming for sis, like, no, 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 but okay. You saved it, you cleaned it up a little bit. So yeah. And they was talking about the baby mom situation. And then she was also letting Andy know that she's kinda on the fence about not getting married, they haven't set a date. And basically the team was just like having doubts, like, uh, maybe I'll just, you know, try to prolong it, you know, trying to just make sure everything gets in order because she also wanted to go back to law school. And Andy was just like, there's no better time. You just need to go out and do it because the more you sit and procrastinate, it's never going to get done. So just go forth with it and do it. So after that, Andy had the papers to take to the, I guess, the office or the printer, one of the two. And when Fatima turned around, she noticed Tamara standing here. She was like, what are you doing here? She was like, and he was like, what's that about? And Fatima was like, listen, I'll fill you in on that. I'll fill you in on that. And then she got her pocketbook and her papers and she walked out super fast to go. And she was like, what are you doing here to Tamara? And Tamara was like, um, I'm bringing him lunch. She was like, oh, okay, bye. And then on that same time, Tamara walks over to Hayden's office and Zach is still there. I guess he must have just stayed there or whatever. And she was like, he was like, you ready to go? And Fatima kept looking at her shoulder and Zach was like, what's that all about? And she was like, nothing. I'll tell you about that later. I'll tell you about that. Nothing like later. And like, what has this woman doing over here? Like, I hold it down. You, we could jump or like... I mean, I never had a woman, but you know, we could, you know. And then Fatima said something. He was like, Yeah, that's why I love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then next, you know, they leave for lunch. Uh, Tamara goes up to Hayden's office, like, I brought you lunch. And he basically told her, like, Oh, uh, we, we want to go to Miami. She was like, Sure. She was like, I want to go. Uh, can I go pack? He's like, No, nah, you don't need nothing. You don't need nothing. Just sit here. We're going to enjoy lunch, chill. Then we're going to go right by now. And then she you knows she had to put on her charm, call him dad, you know, that's a, that way, you know, she real him in, real him in. So he gets on the phone, calls the secretary, I guess, to make some arrangements or whatnot. So we get to the airport. Danny's doing her job. Jonah's ex um, pulls up and basically lets her know, like, you need to be careful because, you know, he just got out of jail. I don't mess with him anymore. I'm trying to get back home to my son. And basically, Danny tried to play it off like, uh, whatever. But, you know, you, she was like, you had a baby by him. But she was like, yeah, that's before I knew how crazy he was. You know, they had a little moment. And, you know, Danny got to be Danny without making a joke. So she's like, so this public service now is over. And the girl was like, yeah, I guess it is. And so she grabs her stuff after getting checked in and walks to go sit down next to, you know, Hayden and Tamara pulls up to her gate. And she checks them in. They got first class tickets. And Hayden that he got like, I've never known for like first class to be like, they have had their own section in the regular lobby airport. I just know when you get on the plane, you sit in a different location. That's all I know from experience. But anyway, you know, he's trying to pull out all the stops and impress this girl. Everybody's just like, ugh. I'm like, Ugh, well, whatever. So they said what they had to say, and they walked off. Then he told them that you could put some bags up, and you could sit the little sex from the lady, and y'all will be private. And then they walked up to their seats, and then the lady was like, well, Jonah's ex was like, pathetic. And then you know, agree is like, yeah, right. So then after that, hmm. Oh. Gary calls Andy while she's at work. 
And she's like, I'm on grind mode. Like, I'm doing work and stuff like that. And she, he's trying to talk to her. She's really not trying to pay him no money. So he asked to go ask her for dinner. And she was like, no. And I guess she can tell, like, he's acting a different type of way. Same thing with him. And he was like, is Robin there? And she was like, no, he's not. And she was like, so what are you basically trying to insinuate? He was like, listen, I'm just asking you for dinner. And next, you know, the secretary from the front desk comes to, like, somebody's at the, um, at the front for you, Ms. Barnes. And she was like, okay, I'll be right there. I'm in work mode. And Gary was like, there's nobody there for you. So she was like, get up, like, oh, I'll go. And then she was like, he was like, so if you say yes to dinner, you know, we can do all the stuff. So she gets up, goes up front, put him on speakerphone, sings it. The lady sings him a song, sings her a song. At the end, he was, she was, I guess she agrees to go with him to lunch or dinner. And, you know, it was, she's the type of person that looks like, okay, I like a gesture, but you shouldn't have did it also publicly, basically. That's just the type of vibes I felt from her. And the look on her face, just like, okay, what she hurry up and do? <laughs> like, for real, for real. So after that, she agreed to the dinner. And the girl left, said thanks or whatever. And then the lady, the receptionist, she was like, that was so sweet. And I can admit it was sweet. And he said the same thing, but she's still not trying to resist and fall for the old Gary ways. It shows growth and maturity. Great job, Andy. Great job. So Gary's at work and he gets a phone call. It just so happens it's Aaron and he's basically telling him to meet him at Karen's salon. He doesn't tell him what's happened over the phone, but they just hurry up and get here and you know, so they can figure out something. So Gary closes his laptop, gets his coat and his, his phone and he leaves. Next we got Maurice shows up. <laughs> at the hospital to see Q and he whispers in his ear like can I change your bed pad <laughs> you can see quick Q's face like he is so shocked and like he was not expecting him to be there and he basically called for the nurse and Maurice was like the nurse is gone she packed up her stuff and left and he touches, touches Q and he was like can you not touch me and he was just kept poking at him like t t t t he Maurice basically told him what was up. He was like, Listen, I don't know how why you did this to me and Sabrina. Like I really had your back and you basically stabbed me in the back, like took all my stuff and you didn't think I was going to come back and retaliate, but you know, it is what it is. And Q was just like, Yeah, all you was worried about was getting this and Maurice was like, no, that wasn't it. I was really down, gen genuinely cared for you. And if that was the case, I wouldn't let you sleep in my place. And basically come to find out, Q did all that because he just wanted to get out of free jail, get out of jail free card. That's basically his whole MO about the whole situation. Cause now Sabrina and Maurice don't got a job. And now they basically like in limbo with everything and stuff like that. And yeah. So Maurice wanted him to tell the truth, and he was like, for what? Like I said, he wanted to get out of jail free card because he would be in there forever. And Maurice and Sabrina, they don't have a, a a record, so they'll be all right with a good lawyer, stuff like that. But Maurice was like, listen, I'm going to have somebody murder you. I got $6,000, and I'm going to give it to whoever random person that want to do it. And he was like, yeah, all right. Basically, count your days. He asked him, when you're going to get out. Why would you ask this man when you're going to get out? And he he actually told him, like, tomorrow. So you already know he plotting. He's going to have somebody waiting and watching. Like, yeah, count your days. So after that, um, Zach and Fatima, they're driving to go see Heather's. Go to Heather's. And, you know, they're talking and whatnot. And Fatima says that, you know... Zach is not all right. And he was like, yeah, I'm not all right. He just basically having all these flashbacks from when his mom used to do to him when he was younger. And he's just like, dang, I didn't even know I had a son. Now I got a son. Now I got to do all this stuff. So eventually, as a woman, she's hungry. So he, she wanted to get her some food before she get back to work. And she was going to text Eddie that she was going to be running late. But Zach was like, nah, I'm going to get you back there a good time. So whatever. So they eventually pulled up to Heather's house. They noticed. They pull up. They get out the car, they notice a little boy outside with a little big wheel. 
and then you got a nosy neighbor <laughs> looking out the window and Fatima was like is that him and she calls his name Michael he looks over at her and then next you know the nosy neighbor starts telling all the business of what really goes on with this boy how he's three years old well he's not three but for the looks of it we know he's three but she don't know that he's three still in diapers he don't talk and he's just out there and she basically let him know that he'd be out there all, all times of the day how his mother be talking reckless to him regardless if he can hear or not like you know People, kids that like that they're very, very smart. They just choose not to say anything. They probably went through a traumatic experience. And that's probably what he did because people like that, they basically regress back to what they did when they was like a baby, opposed to how they are when they're growing up. But yeah, so once Fatima and Zach got all that information, it was just heartbreaking to see them look at this little kid outside by himself. It's like nobody really, you know, paying no attention. And then come to find out, Social services was called four times for that, four four times on Heather, and still to no avail. Nobody did anything. So eventually, they grab the kid and they take him inside, and yeah. Okay, so Fatima and Zach bring Michael into the house, whatever, and they calling around. Mind you, that place is like a pigsty. They're calling me around like, hello, hello. Next thing you know, I walks Heather. And she was like, I would just come in to change him and feed him. And Zach, frustration on his face. is just like, uh, I can see it. he is tensed up right now. That is so bad on all parts because it's like that's child neglect and child endangerment. Like, you got this kid outside. He don't talk. He's in a diaper. And that's just unsafe living for any child, regardless how old they is. So after that, they're talking. She was And Heather was like, I signed the papers. All she worried about is the money. Next, you know, some guy walks in and was like, who is you? And uh he, he said some words and heather was like that's that nigga's daddy like you don't even dress him as oh that's michael's daddy that's all you see him as a, as a paycheck like that's all you see him as a paycheck so for tima she already know how zach is so she's constantly trying to tell him like listen just calm down come on let's just go you know it like i understand let's just go and words was being said and Heather wanted them to get out the house because now she felt like they was judging her. Like, yeah. So when the guy came in, he was like, oh, get you in the tub. Like, you smell like, why Why you? He is three years old. You, he can't really depend on himself. Why are you talking to him like he is a grown, grown man? Like, oh my gosh, like, I just felt bad for Zach and for Tima because it's like, it's nothing really they can do because, you know, that's Heather's child and that's who he's been with for the past three years. So it's just like, mm. eventually, Zach and Fatima, they leave out the house and they were like, listen, we can't. Fatima trying to get his head off, like, listen, you can't do nothing right now because if you go back into the house, it's going to be like, you trespass and you cannot kidnap him because you know, that you, yeah, it's a whole other issue that will go wrong. It'll be like her, her word against his and stuff like that. So basically, the team was like, listen, we'll just talk to Andy. Maybe they can get somebody else, you know, to get things rocking and rolling and stuff like that. So after that, Gary Gary finally pulls up to the salon, to the salon where Aaron is at, and he's basically going frantic. Aaron and want to figure out what things what's really going on so he wanted gary to get in contact with somebody that he knows so they can relay any information so he eventually gary decides to call the mayor and see where things go from there then fatima and zach finally pull back up to the office and they're just talking about like zach you could see he is fuming in the head like i just can't believe that my son is going through this stuff like that living like the way he's living and they're walking through next to you know, Andy walks in and she, and they was like, listen, we were just about to talk to you. And she was like, yeah, I only came up to say because I have an associate, Pam, here. And if they go to see Pam sitting on the couch crying in the lobby and Pam is just going through it. And it's just like, 
and he's like, Pam, what are you doing here? And Pam was like, there's a fire at the salon. There's a salon. Next, you know, she said that the, the, the Karen might be dead. <sighs> but as we know, Karen is not dead. So, yeah, that's that. And everybody is just... Yeah, Zach was like, listen, I'm about to go down to the salon. And they leave. Eventually, everybody ends up leaving to go to the salon. Like, mm, I hope, like, did Karen get out, like, ahead of time or not? Because as I've seen, I think I've seen somewhere before, like, they was doing, like, the synopsis. They show Karen with, like, this um orange and black. Or maybe that's another episode. I don't know. But we don't know yet. But I don't want to speculate or anything. But in the, but still, next week's episode, everybody arrives at the salon. And Aaron's still trying to come for her head. Was like, listen, Pam was up everything good. And Pam was like, no, I didn't. I made sure everything was off. So, oh, that's, they about to, they real and real. And everybody's about to be in their emotions and in their feelings right about now. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap of Fan in, uh, Fan in the Flames. And y'all stay tuned for next week's episode. And I'll see you on the next one. That's what I just said. Bye.